So what is information technology? This is covered in the chapter, and I'm not going to cover it here because it's an easy uh, read, easy for you to understand. You're going to look at personal technology, uh, departmental technology. You're going to look at uh, organizational technology. Um, and so this is all covered in the book. It's easy to read and it makes a lot of sense. So no need for me to spend time on it here. Uh, as you read the text, it's very easy to understand. I want you to think uh, for a few minutes about the role of managers and IT. So we're going to talk through this now specifically identifying appropriate opportunities, smoothing the way for its successful introduction and adoption, and mitigating associated risk. These are the critical responsibilities of managers associated with information technology. I've already discussed briefly the identifying the appropriate opportunities to apply information technology. And that's very important because you have to have a fit between the technology and the application of that technology and how you're going to use it within the organization. And so let's say that you've got an, a business process that can be improved by applying technology and you find the absolute best fit. Well then you've got to smooth the way for a successful introduction and adoption. I'm sure all of you have been through some type of technology implementation where in theory the technology was a perfect fit for the task at hand but the actual implementation of it did not go well because the managers didn't handle the implementation of the project very well. Sometimes things are pushed down from the top and we're told we're getting this new system but we're never told why. There's no buy-in. There's no uh, training. We're just uh, handed this new system and told we've got to go use it. Well that's not a real good method of implementation and it's also not smoothing the way for successful introduction. Um, it creates a lot of problems and it creates a lot of risks and those risks several times are not mitigated. And a perfect example is enterprise resource planning. Now in theory it's a perfect fit. You've got a single software package in theory. Okay, I know it's not the way it works out in practice but in theory you've got an enterprise system that will connect everything in the organization. You've got one central database that's easily uh, backed up, it's easily protected, it's easily duplicated so that way you've got backups of your information rather than having information out in silos in the organization. In theory it's good so it might be an appropriate opportunity to apply IT but wow how many times have you heard of or experienced or seen uh, very long grueling difficult challenging introductions of enterprise resource planning. Uh, SAP, if you don't know what ERP is, I'm, I'm referring to software that is often uh, that's provided by SAP. And if you're not familiar with either of those terms, it's okay. You will be by the end of the semester. Uh, so there's a lot of risks that are involved with this, and it's critical that the managers understand their role in the adoption of technology. There's uh, Table 1.3 and 1.4 that I wanted to point out to you, and you'll read these. But uh, the part here about uh, identifying the opportunities is important, but then smoothing the way for successful introduction and adoption. There's two things here. Uh, one is reasons why people resist. Another is the change management model. And these are both in the text, and I think they're very important. And also talks, the text also talks about IT adoption and the unified theory of information technology adoption um, I think I got that title wrong, but it's it's in. You'll see the exact title. It's a long title um, of this theory that's in in the textbook about uh, why people adopt and use technology. So the first thing is four reasons people resist change: uh, parochial self-interest. I just don't want to because what's in it for me? There's a misunderstanding. Sometimes they don't have information about the change. Some people have low tolerance to change. Some people have a different assessment of this situation and they don't agree that it's the right fit, it's the right technology, it's the right process, it's the right time. And people have different opinions about the situation. So the text goes into this a little bit more. Also here's table 1.4. This is the phases and stages of the change management continuum model. And this is so important. And this is uh, critical for you to understand. And uh, this is something that I want you to hang on to and think about, not just throughout this semester, but throughout your entire program, because there's so many different parts of business where we're changing things 
maybe it's with a customer, maybe it's with their internal employees, maybe it's with a business partner. And this change management continuum model, um, a lot of the times when you see in practice someone who's successfully implemented a change, they followed this model. Whether they followed it exactly, whether they knew they were following it, these are the things they were doing. They were informing the people about the change. They were educating them on how it was going to impact them. They were getting them committed to the change so that they would internalize the use of the technology uh, within their daily life. And so you can read through this in the text. It's an outstanding model. And uh, I think that you'll find a lot of application to things that you've already experienced uh, in your career.